Apple's new MacBook Pro is thinner and lighter than its predecessor with a flattened keyboard and an expanded touchpad. It's also got new Intel CPUs, faster storage, and a brighter Retina display. It's also USB-C only, which has been controversial to say the least. But you know all that already. What you really want to know is, what about that crazy touch bar? How does it work? The touch bar is a long OLED touchscreen that sits above the keyboard, replacing the traditional function key row, and it usually displays basic controls like screen brightness and volume. But when you launch a supported app, new contextual buttons pop up on the screen. Is it a gimmick? If you spend a bit of time trying to figure out different apps, you'll end up with maybe five or six favorite things that can really streamline your experience, and I started using a few instinctively almost right away. The initial thing you'll want to do with the touch bar, though, is set up Touch ID with the built-in fingerprint reader. Just by placing a finger on the Touch ID and clicking down, user profiles switch almost instantly. You can also change the default buttons in the Keyboard Preferences menu just by dragging new ones to the bottom of the screen and right onto the touch bar. In Safari, each tab you have open is represented by a tiny thumbnail image. Tapping on one switches the browser to that tab. Messages has an emoji button, which gives you a long scrolling collection of everyone's favorite non-verbal communication tool. Scroll over to the one you want and just tap on it. iTunes gets useful transport controls, including the ability to scrub back and forth in both songs and videos. It's definitely finer control than you get with just the touchpad. And until we get Photoshop support, Apple's Photos offers the most in-depth touch bar support. There's a wheel for rotating a photo as you crop it. You can also run through all the built-in photo filters or adjust brightness and color all by running your finger across the touch bar. Of course, these are examples of Apple's own apps, the only ones that currently have touch bar support. If you prefer Chrome to Safari, for example, you're out of luck, at least for now. But Microsoft, Adobe, and others are expected to add support in the near future. The touch bar is fun, but the biggest decision when it comes to the new MacBook may actually come down to something more practical. Are you ready to move into the USB-C only future where connecting nearly any accessory is going to require a special cable or dongle? It may seem daunting, but many of the latest ultra-thin Windows laptops have also gone USB-C only, so there's a good chance we're all going to end up there eventually.